Hi everyone, uh, Kim Crossman here for Quarantine Tea with Kim. However, today I'm not having tea. It's actually very hot in Los Angeles today. Uh, so I have got a like grapefruit fizzy thing. I'm gonna be honest, it's not the most disgusting thing I've drunk, but it's definitely up there. When I was at the supermarket, I was like, ooh, grapefruit fizzy. And it's organic, it's good for me, but it tastes, so I don't know, perhaps it's just the grapefruit taste that I don't thoroughly enjoy. Though I do love a grapefruit fruit juice, so I don't know, I guess not all grapefruits are consistent. Anyhow, welcome to the show, amazing people. We have the amazing, the epic, the ever-talented uh, Sharon Casey going to be joining us, and I just love her. She is... Well, she's a dream, and you know her. I mean, she's been on every radio. She's been on radio forever. She was on four. I just was such a fangirl of her. I got the opportunity to work with her on a little e-pilot a few years ago. She's here already because she's on to it. I'm going to get her in the room now. And then for her. Hi, guys. We've got uh, Stu here as well. We've got Ant Waller, Eric James. Oh, my God. Hi, I love you. Hi, I love you. Hi. <laughs> um... Hi, pretty lady. How are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Where are you? I'm wonderful. I'm at home. I'm in my bedroom. Okay. Um, just uh, hiding from my son and my husband because uh, my <laughs> husband didn't have work today. So it meant that I could do this without a screaming two-year-old in the background, which is very exciting. We're very open to screaming two-year-olds. We're very open to screaming anyone's, actually. We're totally <laughs> fine with that. Um, I saw that Justine was here. Holly is here. Sophie is here. Bridie is here. Hi, everybody. Oh. Um, also, guys, if any time during the show you want to get a month of neon on us, all you have to do is hashtag neon, please, in the comments. We are going to be sliding into a few DMs during the show to, um, hmm. oh, and what do you have in your cuppa? Green tea, bag in, bag in. Are you a bag in with tea? Um, I am. Sometimes I feel like if a green tea bag is in too long, a bit khaki, I want to say khaki, not the color, not the shorts. Like a khaki. Yeah. Khaki. Like a like a wall yeah. lining scrape, like a bacon yeah. in the mouth. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with yeah. you. But I'm a bag in on a, on a cup of tea. I don't, I don't know why. And then you can like reuse it and reuse it, which is a good time. Mmm. Mmm. Cup of tea oh. queries. Uh, so yeah, so today we're going to have a bit of a chat, Sharon. We're going to talk about some shows that you're loving. We're also going to play a game called Little Sharon Secrets. Oh, okay. That, that sounds excited. a bit dramatic for really what it is. Um, oh, <laughs> typical me, oversell, underdeliver. deliver um, right. okay. <laughs> And then at the end of the show, you can start thinking about this. We do a little cheers that you get to choose who we cheers to. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, and everyone at home, if you get a beverage, get a bevy. And it's yes. Friday oh my God, in his New name Zealand. Is Dazzle McDazzle. That is like the coolest Instagram screen name ever. Dazzle McDazzle, I didn't see that. Love Shelley, that. Brent is here. Um, so starting from the beginning, how is quarantine been for you? Because you have a sort of unique situation. Yeah, well, we, I am extremely grateful because my, my husband does a breakfast radio show on The Rock. So, yeah. And I do the afternoon show on The Edge. So that thankfully has worked well. Mm -hmm. um, but it has been very exhausting because obviously there's no daycare or anything at the moment. So we've had our two-year-old at home who does not stop ever, um, which is not really surprising. So I've been getting up at like six and I'll do all my radio prep and stuff before he gets up. And then I look after him until my husband gets home. Mm -hmm. And then we kind of have lunch together, which has been really nice. Like it's been yeah. nice to like, sit down and have lunch together and then I'll go to work. So it's been long days and exhausting but it's been like it, yeah it's been it's been good because it's like forced we're spending so much more time together mm -hmm. and i'm really worried like because afterwards the dog is definitely gonna have like real bad separation anxiety oh my like, bed I, oh. I feel like my cats will do that too well they probably won't actually i don't know if they care but it would probably be more from my experience <laughs> um for a lot of people who don't really know how kind of radio works when you say you have to prep your show i feel like a yeah. lot of people might be in the dark of this myth that you kind of just show up and you just chat but uh, it's, it's a lot more to it than that so it's like i write because i do a thing called scandal 
four times a show, which is entertainment news. So I need to find two entertainment stories an hour. So eight entertainment stories a day. And so I scour the internet for the best stories and then write them all up in my, my own words because then we'll send them to like the website as well. And I'm like a real nerd about it too, where I I want to know everything about the story so that if my co-host Jaden asks me a question, I can answer it. Sure. Um, so I'll, that'll take me probably like half an hour. And then... We... Out of curiosity, has that been really difficult in quarantine because no one's doing anything? <laughs> So hard, like so hard. It's, it's like, thank goodness for the Kardashians and Taylor Swift because they are the ones that are like bringing the hot fire. Like probably about 10 minutes ago, Taylor Swift was like posting about how Scooter Braun was releasing a live album of hers today. And so I was like, right. thank you, Taylor. That has filled me up with at least an hour. More drama, please. More drama, yeah, please. Like, thank yeah. you. That is because as soon as you see that, you're like, okay, great. There's going to be like spin-offs of, uh, of other stories off that. So that's going to get me through for the next couple of days, which is good. good. That's um, awesome. But well, yeah, that's definitely been harder. Is there, um, now I'm kind of learning this from doing my podcast. One, yeah. I say the word like an unfortunate mm -hmm. amount of time. Amount of time. Right. And I also say the word, uh, I just think that. <laughs> yes, I feel that, yeah. I am like, I think most girls are like, it's like the, oh no, actually the dudes are pretty like as well. I try, I'm trying not to say like as much, but I am really bad at it. And anyway, is another, was my like crutch word that I had to learn. My boss like, like drilled it out of me, but I'd like say something and then I'd be like, anyway, and amazing. Like a segue and, thing, yeah. Yeah. And then I started saying amazing all the time. So I started trying to say incredible instead. And then I started saying incredible too much. So it's like, you can't freaking win. <laughs> Guys, these are the difficulties. You think radio is all casual, but no, they get it's, it's very, so many hurdles. Oh, and every radio announcer, and once you pick up on it, you'll notice it in all their videos. Every single radio announcer has a tick and they have a thing that they do. So for example, mine is, and I'm doing it now, is I always have hot water or um, green tea in front of me during the show. And when the other person's talking, I'll drink because it stops me from talking over them. And it was like oh. to, such a, to such a point that I would, um, I got told off because in our videos, I'd always be like drinking during other people's stories. Um, She's definitely got vodka in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it, it's different things like, um, I haven't figured out what Jade, my new co-host one is yet, but like Jono's one would be like, he'd grab, like his chest and like go like this with his chest which would be really weird if a girl did it it was interesting really weird. and then i had another one um clint who'd be like turn the mics on 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 then off 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 then on 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 and like during the break he'd just like to sporadically pick things up and dan our producer will go like this on his hair it's like everyone has one and now you'll see it like you'll see it in videos when just like watch radio announcers and videos everyone's got one interesting <laughs> that's so good yeah. i know that for a long time i used to kind of just pick this part of my eyebrow and yeah. i never knew i did it until like i started working people like eyebrows such you know their sister because I, I always thought they should be sisters not twins but people are like yeah. you've got two one's always asking a question and it's because yeah, I would just. Oh, sit you're here pulling and just it up all the time. Play with it, yeah. So. Oh my gosh, Stop it. it's, it's so Stop weird, it. eh? It's like, it, yeah, it's like I never want to see myself. Like, I want to go to a party with myself, but also I don't because I don't want to see what I'm like after I've had a few drinks. Like, it's really <laughs> weird. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, I get uh, a lot of liquid confidence. I think when I drink, yeah. I'm not very good at drinking, but I think my kind of like window, I haven't quite found that sweet spot so I kind of get like almost like super slutty than super tired and it's a very yeah. small window so it's like yeah I'm with you <laughs> I, don't quite I get um I get really if there's not if there's not a dance floor like if there's a dance floor that I'm on there and I think I am Beyonce and I recently saw a video of what it looks like when I dance I am not Beyonce um but the uh, if there's no music that I can do so this is what I've been finding in lockdown is um, when I'm on video chats, I, I love getting real deep in a D&M. And then mm -hmm. I wake up and I'm like, oh, no. 
I've said way too much of my feelings. Like, I just get <laughs> really deep in a and I'm like, I will, I'll talk yeah. to you for hours with like all my feelings. <laughs> but I think that's wonderful. I would love to, we should have a few wines one day and get it. I reckon we'd go yes. there. We'd definitely go there. How is yeah. your, um, how is your mental health during lockdown? Have you, I know that you've had a unique situation, but have you had yeah. any breakdowns, moments, anxious? I've definitely had, yes, my anxiety has been the worst I think it has ever been in that first couple of weeks. I think it's really turned a corner this week. How and does think- it, how does it show up for you? Like, cause it, obviously well, I'm, what I'm learning kind of in my journey of mental health is like, no, there's not one, my anxiety what? might not be your anxiety. So yeah. Yeah. Mine is, I, uh, it's like a nervousness okay. and like I can't. I can't sit still like it's a it's a it's a nervousness like I've done something really bad but I haven't done anything mm. and it's like you know when you've done something naughty and you get that guilty conscience and yep. you feel so nervous that's what I feel like because I don't really get I don't really get nervous like if I'm mm-hmm. gonna MC something in front of a whole lot of people or if I'm gonna host a, te- a live tv show or something I don't get nervous because I'm just like wow I'm so lucky they get to do it and, mm-hmm. and I just don't feel nervous about that but I'll, it's and it was really weird and it was I was going to, it was when I was going to bed, my chest would just go so tight and I felt like I was going to have a freaking heart attack or something. It was weird mm. and it got to the point where I ended up having to like have a doctor's appointment and be like, I don't know what's going on here. Mm-hmm. And um, so now I like have a medication that I can take if it's really really bad and I can't bring it back down to to normal. Does that, that help? Yeah, definitely. It, I feel like it instantly got better knowing that I had it there. Interesting. And I, yeah. I haven't had to. I haven't had to use it. That I think I've only had to use it like three or four times. But just knowing it's there and that I can put mm. an end to it if I absolutely have to. But I, I try to work myself out of it first. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, and and just so I've been making sure that I um, like exercise every day, and I've just started doing um, yoga this week. Well, kind of like yoga Pilates. It's like that sure. one that these mills have got on online and stuff. And so I've been doing like body balance. And that's actually made a massive difference this week, which is because I'm not good at meditating. I try to meditate, but I just can't get still enough to be good mm. at it. Yoga is kind of as close to meditating as I get, if that makes sense. But I'm not very good at meditating either. But then I kind of had a few people... Isn't it, isn't it funny? Like when you're searching for this solution and people give yeah. it to you, but it's not the solution you want. Like, you. like, yeah. <laughs> everyone's like, this will work. And I'm like, no, nah, I don't really want to do that. So I don't no. want to do that Yeah. <laughs> so I'm stubborn. like that with meditating. Everyone's always like meditating. So we actually, uh, we actually started a feature on our radio show where every day at five, uh, 10 past five, we do a one minute meditation as like, on air so like if you're listening to the show even if you're driving you can do it with your eyes open it's just like a breathing exercise for a minute every day and that's really helped as well because it's like a forced one minute of being like ah yeah it's been good but I just can't like when I try and do those half hour meditation courses and stuff I just can't I can't get my brain into it it's really frustrating I wish I could I've never had an opportunity my I have busy like busy lady syndrome which you probably have too that if I am still enough to give my brain like evil brain evil Kim the microphone she yeah. goes, she's quiet here's 9,000 things you've got to like, yeah. list things yes. <laughs> like, and oh, people are like oh you're supposed to just let it let acknowledge the thought and let it pass but I'm like well no because I've got to remember that Mother's Day is on May yeah. and I've got to <laughs> yeah and also it's like You've got to acknowledge it. And I'm like, yeah, well, I am. I'm acknowledging all 10,000 of the things that have come up in the last 40 seconds. Thank you very much. A lot of stuff is happening here. I actually, um, whenever there was this really, I read um, John Kerwin's, both of John Kerwin's books. Okay. And they're amazing. Um, And especially I think anyone that's, has a child or even if you don't read his one stand by me which is like written for teenagers that have mental health problems and um i wish he was talking about one exercise that he does when he goes surfing and i found that one to be really good so it's like you uh it's i may have remembered it wrong but the way i remember it is you're on a surfboard i don't surf but you're on a surfboard and you're paddling out in the waves and it's pitch black dark and every time a shark comes near you, which is like the um, 
which is like your thoughts that are coming mm -hmm. up. You kind of like bat the shark away and you're like, nah, and then you keep going and you just visualize in your head of like batting away the shark. And I found that's real um, helpful. Yeah. It's really bizarre, but it's like, no, that like, works. And then like the thought will come and it'll be like, oh, Sharon, like that person's going to hate you because of that. And I'm like, get away shark. And then I like keep going. And nice. or another one, um, another one is if I'm worrying about something, like, okay, Sharon, you're allowed to worry about that cat thing or whatever like say i'm worrying about a cat like, okay you're you're uh, totally fine you want to worry about the cat that's fine we're going to worry about the cat at 9 30 tomorrow morning because that's when you get to worry about stuff and then by the time 9 30 comes around i don't even remember why i was worrying about the cat and i don't even end up having the worry time oh, because nice. by the time that comes around it's gone so yeah like delaying yeah. It, like being like it's okay brain we will allow time for this yeah so. but by then my brain's like nah the cat thing wasn't a big deal. I'm on a dog thing now. Yeah, we've moved mm. past that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I am definitely on the dogs now. <laughs> um, okay, so this little game has really no stakes in it, but we'll try okay. and do it quickly just for enjoyment factor. Okay. Um, it's 10 quick questions. Error. Because I feel like you get to interview people all the time. Oh, and God. so now I we're just turning the tables, really. I always feel like I'm a bad interviewee as well, and I give really long answers, so I'll try not to do that. That's okay. You can give long <laughs> We're We're all here for you, so it's fine. Okay, what is your favorite food-drink combo? Like, they have to be together, and it's perfection. Oh, um, you can't go – oh, okay. So this is my dream post-lockdown. Okay. Is to dine in at McDonald's and get a McChicken burger, medium fries, sweet and sour sauce, mm. cheeseburger – but without the tomato sauce and the gherkin, and I'm going to add barbecue sauce and bacon instead to make a bag barbecue bacon cheeseburger. And I want to wear one of my Dancing with the Stars outfits and drink champagne. And that is my dream. It's my dream meal and my dream night out. <laughs> I feel like this can totally happen. Well, I'm my, my friends and I are actually going to do it. Oh, but great. We're just, try, we're just trying to figure out how we can get champagne into McDonald's. I reckon, oh, mate, <laughs> everyone has like keep cups these days and stuff. I reckon you go in, hide your flask, you're ready to go. Sure. Okay, no one tell McDonald's, this is a trust <laughs> treat. <laughs> <laughs> On the lookout. For, yeah. Okay, the last time you cried and why? The last time I cried... The last time I cried was on Saturday morning, Saturday morning. I was just really tired and I was trying to, I was trying to cut my son's nails and he wouldn't let me. And we had a standoff for about an hour. And in the end, I just had one of those, like, you know, when you're just really tired and it feels like yep. everything's going wrong. I just went yep. to the wardrobe and I just had a cry and then I felt better. Because sometimes I think you just need to let the cry out. You're like, why, okay, the, why the wardrobe? So I go to the shower immediately as I start crying. Yeah. Why the wardrobe? Because I feel like nobody, it's like just a place to hide where like, nobody is, nobody, yeah, nobody can come in there. I'm just in there by myself and yeah. like it's, our wardrobe is like kind of off our bathroom. So mm -hmm. um, my husband would probably just think I was going to the toilet and wouldn't disturb me. But it's just like the one place in the house that I can hide from everybody. <laughs> Great. That's perfect. <laughs> um, your favorite feature? My favorite feature, like, on, on my you. parents, oh. my eyes. That You've got good eyes. Thanks. That I back that. Eyes. Um, a bucket list item, so something that you would like to possess on a materialistic standpoint. Oh, that I don't have right now. Yes. Um. Uh, there is a bedside table at Cheetah that I mm -hmm. want so bad. Um, basically, so I have an addiction. Do you know the home where still Cheetah? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I, yeah. I have my whole bedroom. Oh, yeah, your whole bedroom is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. So I have an, oh, yeah. like a, a, an addiction to the point that I used to go in there and get like a hot drink on the way to work in Newmarket every day. Oh, yeah. And it got to the point where I had to put a ban on myself because I would be like, oh, I've spent all my money and I've maxed my credit card. And my husband's like, what are you spending your money on? And I was like, okay, I've been going to Cheetah. A bit. I'm just doing little bits and pieces and I've added up. But I want to get there. And then I want to like do it up with little knickknacks that they have. So that's my, my dream. Are you someone who like, um, so I rearranged my space yesterday, but yeah. um, I don't have a chair for this desk that I've now got. Oh, and yeah. incomplete yeah. stress 
it needs to oh. be done. Like people who can do things slowly. I'm, I must be so like erratic in that way that it needs to be complete. That yeah, I am so, is like, stressful. This is driving me crazy because I have done like, so this is my husband's bedside table. Copy. Nice. But that one like doesn't fit on my side of the bed. So I've got this like little one. And Unfair. it annoys me. And then I finally found one that matches his one, but it um, fits on my side. Oh. And then we went into lockdown and I'm like, I'm <laughs> that, that door opens again. I am got, I've got it on hold under my name and I'm at the moment it a cup that it opens again, I will be there at 9am and I'll be buying that bedside table because it is driving me nuts that it's not there. Perfect. I oh. completely relate and I'm very excited <laughs> for that day for you. Um, who, a celebrity that you wish was your BFS? Celebrity, I wish my BFF, okay, this is controversial, but I absolutely love Khloe Kardashian, and I feel like her and I would be best friends. Great. Or, um, so I would say Khloe Kardashian, or um, oh, I think oh, Jennifer Aniston, of course. Obvious. Um, but I feel like she would want to be best friends with me, so I'm trying to think of like people that are close to my age. Jennifer Lawrence. I feel like Jennifer Lawrence and I would definitely- um, I think so too. I think she's right. Yeah, she's um, awesome. Uh, the most yuck smell to you? Coffee. Hate the smell of coffee. Like, absolutely hate it. Interesting. Like, so, like, what about coffee breath? Can you smell it on people who yeah. come you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, if my husband was going to kiss me after a coffee, I'm like, mm, no thanks. Because he drinks coffee, and I hate it. I hate the taste, the smell, everything about it, which is good, because I'm glad I don't have that coffee vice that he yeah. has. I yeah, because I would be amongst it, for sure. Um, song that you have to play on the radio that you just hate, that everyone loves, but you're like, I can't. I hated Rockstar by Post Malone so Great. much. But I Great. really like all his other songs, but I hated Rockstar. That Great. was just punishing. And there was another song, oh, God, I can't even remember what it was. But, oh, I love Lewis Capaldi when they first come out, but then uh -huh. after a while, I'm just like, over it. Okay, because he's so sad. Mm. So I'm just like, come on, man. And we never like, I love Lewis Capaldi and I love Sam Smith. But then after I've heard it nonstop for ages, I'm like, come on, guys. Like, let's get happy. I feel come like on. the song uh, Chandelier by Sia followed me around oh, for yeah. about four years. It was yeah. like everywhere. That and, and just anything Sia. She was such a moment where it was just everything. Mm -hmm. um, the last time you spewed and why? Can I say that on the odd? Yeah, totally. We can do we can do anything. Uh, two weeks ago, because I drank too much red wine. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> At home. Yeah. And it did was, you uh, well, did you so wake up? Drink, and I spew? never drank. Yeah, that's just, I'm that person that if they're hungover they spew. Yeah. So I don't didn't drink red wine before. Um, before lockdown and my husband like loves red wine and like his family love red wine like they have red wine at dinner and it's always I'll always have a beer and they're like Ugh. um but I've got Trash. into it I've got into it during uh lockdown and but the first weekend I got a little too into it yeah and um yeah and the and, next morning was not well oh so it wasn't like you woke up in the night and had to go and spew it was like the morning because I would have woke up in the morning and I was like oh god and yeah. do you cry when you vomit? Nah. No. Nah. Who I'm cries when they vomit? For, I'm searching for a companion. I ask this every day and everyone's like, nah, I just spew. I must have like a deep-seated phobia of vomiting because they it's simultaneous. Is it cry, like you start crying spew, or thing. just your eyes water? No, nah, it's like a crying. It's like... Wow. No. It's like because they're like vomiting is painful and I just... I think I think it's from like a trauma of when I was like in my teenage years I started vomiting and couldn't stop for like four days and got really oh, yeah, that but I think it. I think it's probably like a triggering event for me that yeah. I'm like it may not that'll, end. Yeah. So well, that'll be it. Well look, you've got Megan here. Megan here is I cry too. And someone else. Thank the Lord. And but yeah. I always thought that people who don't cry when they speed were somewhat psychotic, but you might be the exception to the rule because I feel like you're quite nice, so that's fine. Um, a food that you hate? Um, muscles. Hate muscles. Texture, um, smell, existence? All of it. Hate Drop muscles. dead gorgeous. I don't Did you like, watch that? 
I, watch what? Drop Dead Gorgeous, they all get like food poisoning from seafood. Like, oh, no, you should, no. You should never um, eat anything that carries around its house with it. You don't know the last time it got cleaned. Oh my God, that's right. I never have seen that movie. No, I just don't, I just don't like muscles and I also don't like peas. I don't know why. I think I did, but yeah, I hate peas. Um, and then to wrap up this thick segment, uh, the best advice you could give me, and the reason why I'm doing this is because um, you have full permission to pour into my life. You've known me for a very long time. I feel yeah. like our lives get to do this. And yeah. You're, you're well aware that I've been, you know, going through a, a weird up and down of like, oh, depression, anxiety. So I thought, yeah, yeah if I, I feel like I always look up to you because I feel like you, um, you ride through the ups and downs of this industry with such grace, like, you know, take Aww. Dancing with the Stars or like you're on this show and then you've got new co-hosts and I, I know yeah. that that must take a huge toll on you. But yeah, just yeah. it feels like the way you navigate things are so, yeah, with, with just such a grace that I, I, it's something that I really admire and look up to. So yeah, I just kind of- Aww. that's so nice. It's oh. so weird. I, I'm not like good at taking compliments. Um, oh well, please, it's gen it's genuine. <laughs> I think that I. Hmm. What would my advice be? I think that it's so going off what you just uh, noted. Then I have had a lot of co-hosts, uh, <laughs> but and it's not. I promise it's not because I'm a psychopath. By the way, um, no, it's the nature think, of radio. Yeah. Whenever I whenever I think about that is whenever I've had like a radio TV job, and I think this is probably the same thing for you or anyone in any job, is always have, uh, always look for who's that safe person. Like who's the person that's gonna, that's gonna keep you safe. That if you feel uncomfortable or you feel like uh, something's going wrong, or you feel like you might be overreacting and you need somebody to tell you if you are, finding out who that safe person is and not going to the person who you think is safe and then they're not really and they're out for themselves because that's that's definitely what's gotten me through. I haven't really had any like super rough times at, um, at tally really, but I definitely have like people there that are like my safe person that I'd be like, am I being, am I overreacting about this or whatever? And, right. um, and I know it's a trust tree and at, at radio, I definitely, have that uh like the guy that hired me when I very first started 14 years ago who's my big boss at radio now he is like my safe person so I'm just like am I overreacting and he will always give me either um reassurance or he will give me the harsh the harsh truth and if he gives me the harsh truth and I'm like okay cool even though like sometimes I don't want to hear it he will never he'll never tell me something that I don't want to hear so that would be my advice is always have a safe person that you can go to ask truth yeah who will speak the truth to you that's especially awesome. because i feel like in la like that would be really hard because there's a lot of people there that are like it's it would be a bizarre place to live <clears throat> in that sense wouldn't it yeah um but i th i think that uh, you know sometimes i think that la gets a bad rep just because it has a microscope on it but i think the, yeah. those characteristics of people lie everywhere no matter where you yeah. so but that's True. that's really helpful um i love that about la though is that every when you go to la everybody seems to have a purpose like yes. even if they're making they're making your lemon hot chocolate or they're selling you a sandwich or whatever Everybody has a dream they're chasing, and I love yeah. that. And I love that they're outgoing and proud of their dream. And whereas in New Zealand, it's kind of like, uh, I guess I want to do that. I'm gonna think <laughs> yeah. that I could. Uh, and especially, I think if you're a woman, if you're like, oh no, I'm good at that. People are like, she's full of herself, or oh, or if you call something up, it's like, oh, she's a diva. But I think if you, yeah, mm. that, that's you've just got to chase the dream chase yep. the dream I've, I've got this tile i'll show it to you it's in the bathroom my dad gave it to me for my when i just got my first job in radio and i've had it ever since but it's a tile and it says all things in life are difficult before they're easy oh i love all that. things oh sorry all things are difficult before they become easy and i have that like when i brush my teeth every morning it's the first thing that i see That's so good yeah um there are a few uh, shows that you recommended that are on Neon that I'm really fascinated quickly to talk to you about. 
Yeah. Um, one of them I have not seen but heard so much about. Can you explain to anyone who doesn't know what Insecure is and why they should be watching it? Myself oh, included. Insecure is, oh, it's so hard to explain. So it's about this girl. So Issa Rae is one of the most amazing actresses and she i think that she either wrote or produces it produces it as well eh? mm -hmm. and she's just i watch everything that Issa ray is in. i think she's so good i actually wondered if we were having a girl to name a girl Issa after her because i love her that's um, awesome but it's really cool and i i love the like it's a really diverse story it's a fo follows like the story of Issa's character who's just like up and down she's a bloody mess to be honest right. um but then she's got all these really cool girlfriends around her that are like lawyers or like the bitchy friend and things like that and it's just like a really cool story of the ups and downs of life and friendship and dating and things like that and also her um like initial love interest and in, and in it is um extremely hot which makes it um a real easy watch that's but <laughs> Definitely not one to watch around anyone you you don't like watching sex scenes in front of because it, it it's a bit racy in places. <laughs> That's um, a very good note. That's a very good note. But it's but a good. really it's kind of yeah it's it's what's that guy's name? Is it Spike Lee? Is he the guy? Oh, that he might be. Yeah, he's a yeah. Person. I feel like she's he's got a she's got a real similar style to him. It's really really cool. I like it. Okay. And, and then it's a really cool insight into like African American culture as well. It's really cool. Awesome. And there's um. The other show that you love is Shameless. And I'm curious if, like, out of the Shameless cast, who your favorite character is and why? It changes all the time. Well, I, I wondered that because I feel like my consistent like one. Yeah. My consistent one that I love is definitely Lip. Like, okay. I love okay. him. He is just, like, yeah. And I found uh, Fiona, who was, like, the main character. I loved her at the start. And then I started finding her really annoying. Um, but I really love, yeah, Lip is my favorite. That's so good. But Shameless is just a, a TV show that just never disappoints. Like, yeah. I was really yeah. worried about the latest season because Fiona, who was the main character, had left. And I was like, yeah. oh, how's yeah. this going to go? Is it going to be, like, you know, if Carrie Bradshaw left Sex and City, would it still be good? Right. Um, I actually thought that the newest season, which is on Neon, was the best season in the last couple like I thought it was you didn't even notice that Fiona's character had left it was yeah mm -hmm. it was really, really cool I think shows are brave to do that but then I feel like there's also like once you've had a show that's out that long it probably re-energizes everyone to like yeah. really go hard so yeah that's pretty bad um yeah my time has ended with you and I love you so much <sighs> I could literally talk with you forever I know same who who would you like and everyone at home to do a cheers to and why Oh, okay. I would like to do a cheers to everybody that is finding isolation difficult because I know that there's, you know, people that have struggled with their mental health. There might be people that are living in a household where they're scared of somebody in their house. Um, yeah. Just people raising their peer, like their kids or having to live with flatmates, people that are wanting to break up with people, you know, if anyone that has found lockdown. Sure, time, of course. Cheers to you. Oh, no, cheers <laughs> to that. Cheers, cheers to, to you. you. We're sending you good vibes and energy. Oh, yeah, good vibes because we're almost out the other side. And yeah. one thing I've noticed because I – because we have got a central job, so we get to still go to work, mm -hmm. is that the roads have definitely gotten busier in the last couple of days. So I think people are excited and going out more. So just – Stay home, people. We are so close to being free. So Don't ruin it. Don't ruin it. Don't ruin it. Don't ruin <laughs> no, that's awesome. Um, you, oh, I'll, I'll choose you. you. You're a you're a legend. You're a legend. What are you drinking? That was very nice. Um, it's not actually. It's very foul. But um, it's fizzy grapefruit organic. I don't know. Oh. I got a bit jazzy, and I thought I'd like a nice cool drink. <laughs> um. I think I forgot what grapefruits taste like, so. Yeah, not good, not good. Grapefruits and fajolas need to get out of town. It feels like <laughs> it's punching my mouth every time I drink it, so. Oh, it's, God. But that's okay, oh. it's, you know, I'll honor the cheers. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for your amazing time. Um, thank you guys for listening. Remember to do hashtag yeah. neon please for, um, uh, in the chat for the duration that this show is live on the interwebs. Uh, we're going to be sliding into a few people's DMs to give them a month of neon on us. Oh, and Scott yeah. is us having a bad day lifting my spirits. Oh, that's awesome. Um, Sharon, I'm going to go around. Right I don't know if I'm supposed to still stay here or not. So I'm going to go. What's that? 
Am I supposed to still be yeah, here? Yeah, stay here. I'm going to say bye. Okay, cool. Just a second. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I love you. Thank you so much for your for your time. Um, you are an absolute dream, and I look forward to seeing everybody else on Monday. All right, see you. Bye. Bye. Bye.